Question number one as to cross. Welcome to the channel. Do you actually like Destiny? I would say love, but maybe not like, you know? Okay. You, you can love something and not like it, right? How much would you play Destiny if you weren't making videos? I would be living on the bare minimum and uh, just playing Destiny for a good portion of my day every day, unfortunately. And that was really the direction it was either going to go. So either I was going to make some videos and stream or just play it all the time. So which is what we do anyways. Interesting. Okay. And we're going to get to your YouTube origins a bit later in uh, the vid. What annoys you most about Destiny? Oh, man. Man. <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say, I just don't want to just throw a blanket PVP out there, you know? Wow, um, okay. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, you know, because I feel like if Bungie heard that, if we, if they heard PVP and noises the most, then they'll be like, okay, we're removing PVP, which is like definitely not what we want, you know? So, right. but, uh, but yeah, PVP can, uh, can really get me. <laughs> It could turn the sunniest, most beautiful day into the worst day in like like a single match. And I wish I could say I was wise enough at this point to not let something like that happen. But man, sometimes, you know, especially given the circumstances, the metas and everything else, it can happen like that. Do you think the Destiny sandbox can ever be balanced? Never. I gave up on that dream a long time ago, Jess. And, and I wanted to. But we used to make suggestion videos too. Like, this is how we fix things. And now I'm just, I'm just like, no, I just break it more, I guess. You know what I mean? Just go harder. Really? <laughs> I'm giving up, Jess. I'm giving up. Those are the words of a defeated man. <laughs> we'll save it for the new IP, I suppose. The, the the balance sandbox. If you could only play one PvP activity forever, out of, let's say, Quick Play, Trials, Rumble, Iron Banner, what would you play? Everyone hated it, but I love the pure chaos of it. And that was Frontier, or uh, a Fortress Mode, um, Iron Banner. This mm. past go. And I know it was just bubble madness, and um, I contributed to that a little bit, but I actually had a good time. You know what? I actually had a really good time too, and I felt like a crazy person saying that. Yeah, man, everybody was hating on it like crazy, and I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm just not going to say anything. And finally, I think the <laughs> The last day I was like, guys, I think I'm liking this, you know? So, but yeah, there, there's a lot of people that don't like it. What I love so much about that mode is that it's basically just everyone super at mid the mode. Yes, exactly. That's it. And and everyone just went in there. It was pure chaos. You had a bubble or a team of bubbles. It was even more chaotic. So if they would just put kills, like don't even do KD. That's just right. Just put kills yeah. on the scoreboard. Just board. put kills. Just to show what you got. Right. Yeah. It would have been nice to be able to flex something outside of, of course, playing the objective. Listen, I'm all for prioritizing the objective, but you can't play the objective unless I'm getting those kills for you, my gamer. You know what I mean? That's right. Yes. Which specific map? If you could only play one map on that mode. When I first saw this mode and started playing it, all I could think about was, man, Firebase Delphi would be perfect for this mode. You know, especially like the chaos on B point. I, this is just me plugging th that Bungie should bring back that map plus other PvP maps. I just feel like there's so many good D1 maps in the vault that's just like, where are they? It's endless. Yeah. I, I don't understand why. Uh, I mean, I know they, they said that it's hard to just, I guess, copy pasta, but um, it would be nice if they could. What did we wait like three years and then they were like, here's Disjunction or whatever oh, it's called. Oh, oh my God. God, and they waited it so hard too. So you get it like every other game. I would describe that map as every angle is awkward and annoying. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Or just sit on the outside lane with DMT. So this is how they fluff the numbers though, Jess. You know how it is. They're like, see, we are in a, in a scout rifle metal, which we kind of are, I guess. <laughs> We've definitely migrated to that point, but uh, maps definitely play a big role in that. Mm. Speaking of metas, what was your favorite Destiny meta of all time? Oh, oh my. So look, it was, this is more of, it was definitely not my favorite meta, but it, it was so chaotic that I just couldn't believe its existence. And, and that was beyond light. The first time I got frozen, um, the first time someone shatter dived me over and over and over, it was just hysterical. It was hysterically broken. And um, it just has, I, I will finally remember it forever. I did not expect you to say that. <laughs> did it last too long though? Like ideally would it have been shorter? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely needed to be short. Now that's the meta that stands out in my mind the most. Now mm -hmm. the best meta we've ever had, in my opinion, was 30th anniversary. Um, mm. I felt like we got to a really good sweet spot right before 3.0 subclasses came into the game. And then, well, you know, everything just kind of went to poop after that. But um, <laughs> Um, that's that's the reality, right? They gotta, I guess they just they gotta pump up the new subclasses, right? Just like I think that Strand's probably gonna do the exact same thing. What about your favorite Destiny memory of all time? Oh, um, well, oh my God, there's there's a bunch, man. I can reach all the way back to the Destiny one. Mm -hmm. I I would say the the moment where this game, where Destiny, where I was like, okay, this this is a different kind of game, was the first time I saw someone shooting Icebreaker, and oh. um, and it was back in D one, and it was the strike. I'm trying to remember the strike. It's the big Vex guy down in the pit, and you didn't have to jump down in the pit to engage. Um, you could actually stay up top where the K, but a Minotaur would spawn behind you, right? Right. And um, I remember like I was watching this guy use Icebreaker and I was like, how does this guy never run out of ammo? And I don't think we had insect screen back then. Like, I don't think you could inspect someone back then. Mm. Um, but I was just watching him shoot over and over again. And I was like, dude, I've got to get a weapon. And he was like, all he told me, he was like, dude, your only job is just to make sure this Minotaur stays off my back and we'll get to this strike. And I, I felt very comfortable in this backpack. Wow. That is such a surprising specific memory. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't remember that guy. You know, you think I would remember who that guy was. But yeah, after that, I was like, okay, this is, this game's different. How are you feeling about your hairline? This is more of a me specific question. I'm feeling okay about it, but knock on wood. I go and I see my friends, you know, once a year and I'm seeing some of them bite the dust on that. So 
I just don't think I could be a sexy bald guy, Jez. I wish I could be. I feel like, you know, like bald, some people rock that so good. I couldn't do it. It just wouldn't work for me. Yep. I'm so glad you said that. I feel exactly the same. I'm terrified of losing my hair. And this video may or may not be sponsored by Keeps. Let's go. Big shout out to Keeps. Hi, I'm a giraffe that specializes in event planning. And this is an ad about men's hair loss prevention. These days, my hair is thicker than those anime waifu thighs that you definitely don't Google sometimes. I also comb my hair with an industrial grade iron rake. And that's all thanks to Keeps. Previously, my hair was thinning, which is a problem I would love my stomach to have, but F me, I guess. Since I started taking the Keeps prescription medication about two years ago, my crown is thick at the back and my hairline has stopped moving upwards. Anyway, two out of three guys will start to lose their hair by 35. So that's probably you, statistically. Probability comes for us all, or most of us. That's how it works. If you don't care about all that, then God bless. But if you do care, you must take action now before you've lost the hair. Do not wait until it's too late. So to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash jez or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash jez. I use the product myself, but they paid me to tell you about it. If you could only use one Destiny weapon forever, which weapon? Um, yes. I, so for, for everything, I guess, PV and PVP. Um, mm -hmm. ooh, I guess Vex, in its current state, Vex Smith Class. Really? Yeah, I think that if I was like, so, like if I just could use only one weapon, has the ability to be used as like a linear two. So like, um, it, uh, it can be used in PVE. It can do pretty mm. good damage in PVE. So, and then on, inside of PVP, it's been performing really well. What about if you could only play one class forever? Uh, Titan, Titan for sure. Everyone thinks mm. I'm a Warlock main these days. So come on guys, I, I'm a Titan. And what subclass? Right now it's, it's gotta be Arc. And I know that's like every Titan right now, but um, Storm Grenades are, are pretty nutty. This is forever. So you're gambling that they're never gonna nerf those into the ground and overcorrect. Oh, yeah. So what's the long-term play? I have always stood by hammers for so long. Like I mm. even, I think my buy on, on maybe is it Twitch? I feel like the last hammer Titan, which I've had some kind of abandoned hammers. The, the, the tier supers really pulled me away from that. Maybe maybe hammer. Like if I had to just choose one to lock in out of love and, and to die with it, it would be hammers probably. Delete one exotic weapon and one exotic armor piece from the game. Oh man, if this was like a few months ago, I'd say Lawrence Driver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything against any exotic weapon that I can think of. Um, No personal vendettas that they just annoy you. Yeah, we've lived through it all. Like <laughs> the last word meta and on controller, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would have said last word at one point, Lawrence Driver at another point. Um, Or even Forerunner at some point. Mm. I, man, this is difficult. I would want to just delete Telesto because I know that it would be impossible to delete Telesto. You know, mm. something would break. Like I, I think Bungie itself would catch on fire. Not that I want Bungie to burn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, add it out. Cut him uh, correcting himself. <laughs> Exotic armor piece. Probably worm husk. These hunters out here just be rolling on the ground and just kind of worry about that. It's bad enough that like no one ever commits to an effing gunfight anyway already. Right. And so hunters already be rolling out of gunfights. And then the fact that they'd be incentivized to roll out of gunfights for free health. It's just too much. Yes. Yeah, I agree. What exotic do you love but wish was better? Um, I think one of the coolest looking exotics is Mask of the Quiet One. What does it do hypothetically for those in the audience that don't know? So it grants ability energy when you're damaged when critically wounded, you actually get health back. But this is, you know, they have health and shield split up. Um, it only tops off your critical health, like the, like the red portion. It doesn't top off your, your shield. Mm -hmm. And then the ability energy that it grants is like uh, nowhere near what Heart of Most Light does. So I just feel like it's like stuck in this weird spot where it's like it's trying to be one eye mask and it's also trying to be part of the most light and it's just doing a terrible job at both of those jobs, you know? How would you fix it? You would give it a little bump? You know, that's, I would overtune it way too much. This is why I, I would never be on the sandbox team for Bungie. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's such a sexy looking exotic, especially with like the new Iron Banner shader that just came out. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely overtune it for both of those aspects. But then, you know, you'll be in a situation where it's like, what's the point of one eye mask? And then like, what's the point of part of the most light? But you know, yeah, I need to be meta. Okay. What's one small thing you'd change about Destiny's PvP? Oh, uh, I don't think this is a small change, but uh, connections for sure. I mean, I, I think we're that point in Destiny's life cycle where I just feel like, I, again, this is one of those things outside of my my knowledge realm. Um, but, you know, people talk about servers and peer-to-peer -peer and all that stuff. But as well as Destiny does, I feel like at this point we should have better servers for, for everything. So, but especially for PvP. Okay. And now what's one big thing you change about PvP? <laughs> That'd be the big change, huh? The other big change. Hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to say the, the four, the four letter word, uh, the SBMM word. Everyone calls us toxic for bringing that up. But until connections get fixed and get better, that's definitely something that I would like to see addressed. If you had to listen to one character forever in game, who do you want to listen to? I like Lichmi. And I know that's not how we say her name, but that's how I, I, I say her name. But who even uh, is that? The, uh, she was the head of the future world cults. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody hated on her because she was like, you know, killed the Elixir and, and stuff like that. But did she sound like she had a cigarette in her throat? Yes, absolutely. And I don't know why. I, I liked it. I was like, rhyme me my grandma. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been doing it. <laughs> if you could only have 100 in one single stat and they had to have zero in all the other stats, which stat are you going for? Oh, oh, stats being like recovery, intellect, resilience, all those things? Yeah. Oh, at, in this sandbox, resilience for sure. But again, you're dice rolling that they're never going to change resilience in the future. So are you really going to go resilience? At this point, the short-term benefits outweighs the long-term losses. 
bosses. And as a Titan, I suppose you have even more incentive to go resilience, right? Yeah, yeah, the barricade. Yeah, for sure. F marry, kill, Zavala, Ikora, and Mara. What about them? So you've got to F1, marry the other, and kill the other. Oh! This is a mature channel. What can I say? Right. Well, no, no, no. This is a great question. It's a tough one because all of them I would love to have a night with, but um, <laughs> God, that's a tough one. And then Mara would be such a difficult one to marry. I, I just mm. feel like, I think I would marry Zavala. I just feel like Zavala, we would just gel well for the long run. I would probably, I see, I don't even know. I say every one of them I would have a night with, but I also feel like Mara would, even a single night with her would ruin you. <laughs> <laughs> Just to save myself, I I guess Ikora. I would I would F Ikora, and I would unfortunately have to kill Mara. But it's, it's because she's just she's such a baddie. There's no other thing that I can do. That is such a fascinating long term play. And I <laughs> I did not expect that. That was really well thought out. If you were a Destiny raid boss, what suffix would you give yourself? For example, how it's Atheon times Conflux. Oh, mine would be Jez mentally disengaged. <laughs> I think mine would be Astrocross. Yeah. What? Just <laughs> that's it. Just yeah. How how do you spell that? Um, I think Y, A, and, and just a lot of H's. Oh, interesting. I'm kind of into it. <laughs> Assuming it was good, would you rather a Destiny anime series or a live action series? Oh, anime series for sure. The arcane approach. If they were going to do live action, what one celebrity would you want to see playing a, a character? I always thought of Destiny if they were to take a live action approach, that they would be perfect if they took a Mandalorian stance. Ooh. Pedro Pascal. Look, I would love to see him in Destiny, but almost playing like a Dredgen Yor or something like that, you know? And if you could bring any exotic from Destiny, one to d2 what would i'm sure you get this a lot in twitch chat but please just bear with us i know we have super good advice and occasionally i'll catch like a tweet that's like if only we had super good advice back and i'm like dude no one even i don't even think anyone really used super good advice back in destiny one i really liked the lock i thought that was a really cool one. Oh, the warlock uh gun yeah the warlock exotic. i thought that was really good and i think that one would be cool because again you know that it was like a double-edged sword if you didn't use your super the, and you kept it instead the weapon was like super amped mm. which uh would incentivize people to you know not use their abilities so much back to weapon play i would love to see more of that in d2 as well if i had to give up my super completely, but I could get like 100% in air accuracy. I would do that in a second. Absolutely. Especially right now, for sure. What is your most played non-Destiny game of all time? Uh, RuneScape. I think I have more hours in RuneScape uh, than I do in Destiny, which is saying something. What? To this day? I think my Destiny hours are about to overlap what I had in RuneScape, yeah. but the last time I checked for RuneScape, let's see, I, I had um, I want to say about 12,000, 13,000 hours. 13,000? It was a ridiculous amount. Yes, this is all I did, man. And all through high school and <laughs> and uh, freshman, sophomore year of college, it was uh, it was me grinding in RS every day, dude. My guy, that is problematic to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I let everything in around me completely implode, and I was I was okay with it. I was like, you know what? I'm getting evicted tomorrow, but at least I got the Santa hat. Wow, I did not expect <laughs> you to be such a filthy degenerate. That is amazing. <laughs> Do you still dabble? I it's one of those things, man. When I finally quit RuneScape, I knew that I could never relapse again, or it would be bad. <laughs> like I just I just stayed away from it and i have friends that play it and i'm like guys i just i can't get back into it or, or bad things are going, going to occur what's your most enjoyed game of all time then you know i think one of the games that i look back on really really fondly especially given the time frame was probably i know a lot of people probably say this but probably skyrim i mean i mm. it was like when it launched it was the winter you know in skyrim of course there's the aesthetic of it being that cold mm. um it was just perfect i, I don't know what it, and it was like i remember playing it specifically like around christmas and stuff i was really really enjoying it so mm. yeah that was a very enjoyable game i don't think anyone played skyrim was like oh this game is garbage i don't I, i'm pretty sure it got high marks all right, let's make your dream game. Take the world from one game, the combat from a game, and the storytelling from a game, and we'll combine them. I would want to take the world of Destiny, but a Dark Soul approach. Oh, interesting. Post collapse, much grittier, much harder. I feel like these days, like in terms of the cinematics, like God of War has definitely set the bar mm -hmm. uh, of telling like the best story. But lore wise, I think Destiny is actually one of the highest. I also think like the Witcher series mm. has like very good depth in its, in its lore. And, you know, Witcher was like one of those, like you could get carried away with like a single sign mission and love it just as much as like the main stuff right yeah if you could be insanely good at any game what game would that be i hate to say dark souls again but really it is mesmerizing watching uh dark souls speed runners or or the guy that like beat dark souls with a stick mm. i when i see that I'm, I'm just i'm like man i am a terrible gamer in comparison to this person if you worked for ign what would you rate first of all destiny one overall out of 10 okay so so perspective here mm -hmm. based on at what what time frame based on what we know now overall the whole thing whole thing yeah i i would say an 
8 out of 10. And now, Destiny 2 overall out of 10. Same, people aren't gonna like this. <laughs> You're shilling for D2 right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I would actually give Destiny 2 a higher score, probably 9 out of 10. Really? I know everybody looks at D1, and I too have rose tinted glasses at time, but every now and then I'll load up Destiny 1, I'll go play it for a little bit, and I'm like, man, we have, we have this game has improved so much over the D1 version. Now, we'll say this. There's one thing we can get back from D1. I wish we had D1 strikes in D2. In what way? Uh, we just had some really cool strikes, like the Undying Mine and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I guess the other side of things, too, is like D2 is fatiguing in the strike category because we've had strikes taken away from us with, you know, the DCV. So mm -hmm. that, that pool feels even more narrow. And they were so hard back then, too. Just like we were talking about Nightfalls, you know, you could die the instant boot and all that stuff. I mean, we GMs get that difficult as well. But there was like, I just felt like back then in Destiny 1, it was you had the bare minimum of, of loadouts and you either got good or you did. How do you feel knowing that you're the most viewed video on your channel is the what was destiny one really like from nine months ago that's wild um i think it was a combination of probably veteran players that, that just were hitting that nostalgia mm -hmm. and then a combination of like new players that never played because there was a lot of people in the comments that were like i never played destiny one i was just curious what it was like it makes me wonder if bungie ever did in the future like years down the road if they did like a classic reboot similar like wow or, or even mm -hmm. like runescape classic like if they were to do something like that how well it would do okay now we're to the youtube category why did you start making videos originally it was just uh share some clips on how to do a couple of things. Like I remember the Templar got patched. Remember when we used to just push them off. And I remember I just made a video of like how to do them legit because a lot of people just didn't know how to do them legit. And, and then after that, I was like, you know, I think I might actually start making a few videos on this and kind of just stuck with it. And I think the game, I mean, I obviously fell in love with the game first and was not a YouTuber or streamer or knew anything about that when the game first came out. Mm. And I, I I didn't really get into it deep until maybe Rise of Iron. In terms of um, video creation? Yeah, in terms of video creation. Yeah, I, I made some videos and I dabbled and did some stuff um in that first year. And then Taken King, I actually ended up taking off and with some RL stuff. And uh, and then I returned in the April updates. And then that's Rise of Iron was when I was like, okay, I think I'm going to get you know serious about this. Was that like Dark Below era? Do you remember? Yeah, it was like pre-Dark Below era. And roughly how old were you at the time? Do you remember? Like the pre-Dark Below first video kind of time? 22, I believe. That's so interesting because I was 21 when I first started making videos. And that was right around the Dark Below era as well for me. Right. Yeah. I, man, we were. I was just seeing people. Of course, Dado uh, was throwing some videos. I watched a ton of Mr. Fruit, mm -hmm. um, Planet Destiny. And I would like watch these guys like on my way to work i would uh occasionally i would like turn down the radio while i was listening like imagine what i would be saying to, to make a video mm. and just kind of sit there because i had like an hour drive every day back and forth so it was actually two hours in total so mm -hmm. um i had a lot of time just to sit there and just kind of dream about it and eventually um eventually got around to making videos so why did you keep making videos before the money started to come in and like before you went full time something about it man you know you just get kind of a high like the first time you throw a video out there and it actually pops off granted you'll throw out like a hundred dumb videos and like you know nobody but your mama commented on it but that one video that's like that just takes off and actually does good you're like oh my god i gotta taste that again and um you kind of keep going going after that when did you go full-time on youtube yeah so i actually went full-time in 2016 and it was around it was around rise of iron or, or leading up to rise of iron that i was like all right i'm gonna go full-time i remember i was gonna end up going back to school that semester mm -hmm. and uh i was like you know i think this might actually be something so i'm gonna actually you know sit down and, and focus up on this granted jazz you know how the world of content creation was even after i committed it took years before you know I would say things became sustainable enough. So it wasn't a financial milestone that pushed you down that path? No, I, I would say it was making next to nothing pretty much for like, you know, two, three years. I actually, I remember my son was born, which was 2017. And it was after, after that year, it was Christmas of 2017. I was reviewing my financials mm -hmm. and I was like, I made a decision right there. I was like, all right, this is either going to do well going into this next year or I'm going to have to get out of it because my kid is not going to suffer because of, you know, this dream of mine. Mm -hmm. And you know how Destiny 2's launch was. I mean, it was terrible, you know? Um, everybody was quitting the game left and right. So, you know, I didn't have a lot of high hopes, but we uh, we got a, a good schedule underneath us and it, it worked out. But there was never a moment where like just factually, you're like, I just earned as much as like my previous full-time job, you know, something like that. Yeah, I would say that moment definitely came in 2018 where I was like, all right, you know, I think this I think this is it. And it was really hard to explain. I, I would have family that, you know, we would get, get around for the holidays and they would be like, so what you been up to? Are you still doing that YouTube thing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm still doing that YouTube thing. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of jokes said there here and there but you know it is what it is it was, a, it was a hard thing to understand especially from the culture i came from so when you feel that passion about something that's that's pretty much all you see right you just completely commit and if you never became a youtuber what would you be doing probably pouring concrete jess no lie really that's originally what i was doing my whole life uh was, was working construction and i would be on construction job sites dreaming of going home that night and making youtube videos so yeah what videos would you make if views were guaranteed well i would still probably be somewhat addicted to destiny but man if it was just absolute guaranteed and if i wouldn't lose my life like I once did, like perhaps RuneScape. Oh, that's such a slippery slope. You know, <laughs> I, 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 you just don't dab, don't even try it once, kids. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. If you had to start a new channel tomorrow, but views weren't guaranteed, what would you start? Surprisingly, an anime review channel. And I've been telling my chat we were going to start one um here soon. And it's going to happen. And the and the first anime we're going to be reviewing is one of the best animes I think ever made. Uh, as you may have watched, it's called Domestic Girlfriend. Um, it's a fantastic show. It's a great rom com. And if you ever get a moment, I think uh, I think you would love to watch it. Uh, I've seen Avatar: The Last Airbender and Yu Gi Oh. Does that count as anime? You know, I'll give it a pass for sure. And some people don't like subs, but uh, but yeah, if, if you ever get a chance, yes, just, you know, I, Crunchyroll or Funimation, load up Domestic Girlfriend and it will change your life, dude. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. Who's your most watched YouTube channel? I actually, I watch a lot of uh, just random clips, I would say from like Aspen Gold. But the channels that I watch like probably on a day-to-day -day basis <laughs> would probably be, there's this channel called FX Evolution and they're a finance channel. I watch them every day and, you know, just to kind of keep up with the, the world events and stuff like that. So kind of a boring one there, but um, yeah. What's the best thing about being a YouTuber for a job? I don't feel like there's really no ceiling, you know, as far as what you can make. There's no parameters outside of like the algorithm. I know the algorithm can be punishing at times but you know as far as like making content there's no like oh no you can only make a video on this or that or make only one a day it's it's open i mean you go as hard as you want for better or for worse and what's the worst thing burnout for sure yeah you could definitely reach a certain point where it's just like you know, diminishing returns and no sleep all that good stuff it tends to happen around annual extensions for sure did you ever almost give up on either youtube or destiny i actually originally gave up on it so 2015 i gave up completely on it i gave up on destiny and i gave up on youtube i, I quit playing games completely i uh i committed myself to real life stuff Stuff, real life work and yeah it was one of those things where i was like all right it's time for me to grow up i gotta do the thing and you know i'd say about six seven months i just started feeling this urge to go back and make a few videos and i went back and made one video and i was like if somebody just comments on this i'll jump right back into it and i had a handful of comments not many but a handful of comments this is before i had really any subs but people are like saying yeah we would love to see content from you again and so i was like all right i'm doing it we're doing it so yeah what's life after destiny for you let's say your channel died tomorrow what would you do uh jess i would go out and i would get every loan possible i would just pile in the credit as much as I possibly can. Okay. I would assemble as many people as I can to create a dream game. Whatever that dream game. What maybe it is the Dark Souls Destiny Witcher hybrid. Mm -hmm. Um and and then it would be boomer bust. Either we would make the most successful game ever or uh we would go bankrupt. Wow. Basically 10x leverage and then just rolling the dice. Throw it all in, all the subprime loans, every every junk <laughs> bond. I we would get it all that we possibly can. Yep. And so yeah, it potentially prison time. <laughs> So 2008, uh, housing crisis, the video game. There you go. That's right. That's it. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. I did not expect you to say that. Wow, the risk tolerance on this guy. I respect it. That's huge balls. <laughs> if you couldn't make Destiny videos, but had to cover another game full time, what would you cover? Would it be a RuneScape? I actually got really into um, New World when it came out. Played a lot of it. And honestly, would have kept playing it. They just, uh, they the, the in game kind of dropped the ball, but they, they've been doing a lot of updates since. But it's such a good game to me. I, I very much enjoyed it. Does reading hate comments on any platform affect you? I would say like maybe in the beginning, it might've had some effects, but uh, no, not at this point. It's it's all, they, they all contribute. So um, uh, some of the some of the people that watch every single one of the videos are the haters. So and they comment and the algorithm loves that. So I'm just like, okay, keep going. Thanks for the engagement, you effing moron. Keep keep going, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's the proudest video you've ever made? Oh, um, huh. I guess the video that is that I I didn't actually make, but um, it was just a bunch of stream clips. It was just our best of Astros 2021. That to me, uh, my editor Luke did that one, and it's like an hour and a half long. And it's we've got one for 2022 coming up here soon. And those are some of my favorite videos ever because you just take everything from streams and you know you throw it all together and it's just a bunch of random you know stupid stuff but i i very much enjoyed those a lot um but one of the best scenes in destiny that i like the most was actually the, the deep stone crypt when you're actually in space and you're jumping through the space station it's like a you know five and a half minute video but and like there's no editing i didn't do anything i just played the music in the background and that is one of the most every now and then i'll just watch that video just to just relive that moment when we first went through that ray like it was such a beautiful moment what would your gamer tag be if as the cross was taken originally jez and runes my name, which was known across, was Icy Hot 101. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was my name for the longest time. I unfortunately had to rebrand going into this. Was Icy Hot like 12 year old as across the king? That's a sick game attack. Yes, that was absolutely right. So actually I had a best friend and we both unknowingly were playing RuneScape and we didn't know, I didn't know he was playing. He didn't know I was playing. And suddenly I was like, uh, we, we found out that we both played RuneScape. And I was like, oh cool. Well, let's get together in RuneScape and, and hang out. And he goes, all right, great. What's your gamer tag? And I said, Icy Hot 101. And he goes, bro, that's my gamer tag. Because it was originally his gamer tag on Xbox. And so we both had the name Icy Hot 101. 
one on one in RuneScape. Uh, so eventually I had to make a new name. I waited years. It took like eight years before I was like, I can see them. It was like, fine. I was like, PJ, I see how one on one. It's originally your name. I'll change it. And that's whenever I uh, made Astro Cross. Weren't you like a little embarrassed that you kind of stole his gamer tag? Not even a little bit. It was <laughs> that good of a name to me. I was like, it's literally the best name ever. I, I have to take this by force. <laughs> Why did you go with Aztecross? It was a combination of things. So uh, Aztec, my dad owned a construction company when I was a kid mm -hmm. and it was called Aztec Construction. Mm. And so it, it was that and then Christianity by faith. So the cross and I just kind of threw those two things together. Would you rather eat a rotisserie chicken sized horse that is also rotisserie or fight a horse sized rotisserie chicken that's alive but has been rotisserie? Oh, wow. Well, I, I just feel like I would lose that fight. I'm very confident I would. So I guess I would just take just eating the rotisserie horse. Rotisserie chicken sized horse. Rotisserie chicken. Si oh, is it the horse rotisserie? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> if you were part mermaid, part sausage, would you rather be top half mermaid, bottom half sausage, or top half sausage, bottom half mermaid? Now, the bottom half sausage, is it two sausages or is it just one really big? Large sausage, Jess. You can have sausage legs if you want, or you can just be a sausage stump and assume you're just hopping around. I think bottom half sausage if I could just make it one large sausage. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> yeah, I just feel like I could put it to better use, you know? Would you rather have infinite cheese and no movies, or movies, unlimited movies, but no movies? Wait, wait. Unlimited movies, but no movies? That's right. Okay, Jess, you lost me. I heard cheese, I heard movies. Uh huh. And then I heard no movies. Yep. Which I could repeat the question or where are you, where have I lost you? Could, could you repeat it again? Yes. Okay. So it's infinite cheese and no movies or movies, unlimited movies, but no movies. <laughs> um, I definitely want movies. Okay. But yes, I also want cheese. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm stuck here. Mm hmm well, the second option has unlimited movies. Unlimited movies. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what about the cheese? Infinite cheese, but no movies. Thinking it back on this year, I've ate way more cheese than I've watched movies. Interesting. But then at the same time, what other form of entertainment would I have? I can't think of any other forms of entertainment that even exist. I... <laughs> You know, I think I could supplement something for cheese, right? I could find something else, right? Just give me the, just give me, never mind. Just give me the cheese. Just give me the cheese. I can live without movies. <laughs> okay, okay. Infinite cheese, but no movies. Objectively, I would say that is the incorrect answer, but this is your interview, so I'll allow it. A sharp cheddar, man. Sharp cheddar gets me every time. Do you ever exaggerate your accent in your videos? I would say in the beginning, I, I don't know if I exaggerated it or if I, if I really was just maybe countryer, but uh, no, at, at this point, no. And some, somebody actually told me that, because I've been living in Florida now for two years. They said, um, I'm losing my Louisiana accent, so. If I could comment on this, you and I have hung out um, in real life at Bungie and uh, I had yes. a wonderful time. We hung out together. We sat next to each other for all the, you know, NDA things. I didn't notice your accent as much in real life, but it's very prominent in the video. So that just had me wondering. Yeah, I would say the old videos for sure are definitely a lot more country sounding. Now keep in mind, I was coming off the backs or the back of working construction day and night with a bunch of like extremely sounding country people. So, and I, I don't know, I don't think I could pick up an Australian accent, although I would love to, but around country people, it's like the more you hang around, I'm just, you just, you just see into your bones or something and you just get countryer. <laughs> How would you describe your feet? Um, I, I would, I don't, I don't know. I get a, a comment every now and then about if I would ever sell my feet pics. I don't know. I've never been able to, to observe feet. I've never saw a foot ever and thought, man, that's a sexy foot. I would say my foot is, I would give it like a, a six out of 10 if I had to rate it. Slightly above average? Slightly above average, yeah. If you had to get cosmetic surgery with no side effects, what would you get? Um, it's not really, I don't know if this is cosmetic, but um, multiple set of arms would be nice for sure. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Multiple sets of arms would be nice. You want more arms? Yeah, that would be that would be good. You know, there's another lewd answer I want to give you, Jess, but I don't know if it's allowed to be said. But dude, if I could have a second dong, that'd be awesome. <laughs> That just puts you above the competition big time, you know? Are we going identical to the first? Are we going slightly bigger, slightly smaller? Talk me through it. Substantially larger. <laughs> yes. Substan <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with the appetizer and then roll out the entree, you know? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is an amazing answer. What did you hate as a kid, but now love as an adult? Um, I don't, I don't know why, but for some reason, I like to get on my lawnmower and mow my yard at this point in my life. And I hated it as a kid, but, uh, you know, and I don't even do it that often, but occasionally it's like, if I want to just get out and, and do something, it's like, okay, I'm going to go mow the grass right now and feel accomplished. Let's flip it upside down now. What did you love as a kid, but now you hate that you're an adult? Mm, everyone's going to hate this, but anything Pokemon related. <laughs> 
interesting. <laughs> Guys, I Pokemon, I loved it as a kid. Call me a boomer, but it's lost me. Favorite music artist of all time? Um, I recently went to the Weekend concert and I liked them already, but watching them live just, it, it blew me away. So yeah, I think, which I know that he's probably like a lot of people's favorites, but mm -hmm. um, I love his stuff. Favorite music genre of all time? What Weekend makes? Like Weekend makes like, it's great high sex music. High sex music? Yes. Like doing drugs and getting high and then having sex kind of music? Yes. Favorite food of all time? Uh, dude, I've got this, this fuss shop that I go to down the road and um, it is by far, it's the thing that lifts me out of death. I'm really sick. So, so can you, I don't, I'm not, what are you saying? Pho? Yeah, pho, pho. It's, uh, so it's a Vietnamese dish on my mom's side is Vietnamese. Describe it to me if I have no idea. Is it like a curry? Is it like a meat? What are we talking? It's not a curry. It's like a ramen in a way, uh, but it's, it's like bone broth, um, rice noodles. It's got like a variety of herbs in it and you can choose what meat you want in it. What item worth a hundred dollars or less do you love the most in your life? My wallet I recently got is and this is not a sponsorship, but it's got a tracking device or it's got a little thing on it where I, I put a tracking device mm -hmm. and I used to lose my wallet all the time. And this has been the best thing I've ever gotten. It's not a Ridge wallet, is it? No, it's not a Ridge wallet. What item worth more than $100 do you love the most? Dude, I bought a Tesla last year and um, it's been the best. It's been my favorite thing I've ever owned. Really? Tell me why, please. I, I have never been a car guy ever, and but I don't think I can go back to a gas powered vehicle again. And uh, I grew up in the South. I have a truck. I've got an F-150, mm -hmm. um, but the, I don't something about electric cars and maybe it's just specifically Tesla cars, they feel so good to drive. It's one of the, it's the best selling vehicles I've ever driven. Is there any functionality that you love or is it just the feeling of driving it? Like what specifically? Specifically, I inside you just have like the big like iPad interface, which is really cool to me. And I like the minimalist aesthetic to it where it's like no vents or anything. And then I also just love how freaking fast it goes, man. Like like where I live in Florida, there's so many people around with like, you know, Beamers, Corvettes and like a variety of other things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I'm out here street racing every day, but there have been occasions where <laughs> I have to, you know, I've been on a red light and some other guy in front is revving his engine and man, it feels good to just, you know, just whoop them real quick. And, uh, <laughs> a little 1v1 on the road. With my souped up golf cart, you know what I mean? Essentially what a Tesla is. It just yeah. feels like an electric golf cart. And I, yeah, I love it, man. Are you using any of the like assisted driving functionality? I do. When we go on road trips, um, it's uh, it's got the auto drive mm -hmm. and um, dude, I'll kick it in auto drive and I'll sit there and, you know, I might even mess around on my phone for a little bit. And I have complete faith, at least on the interstate. There, there is some times when, when you get like, like in some back roads and stuff or like the Tesla's like doesn't really know where you're at. Mm. But on the interstate, I have complete faith in it taking me from point A to point B. Because I just watched a video from Marquez Brownlee where it was just him doing complete auto self-drive. He was just stressing out of his mind because it was struggling. There is times like in, if say for instance, there's been construction and like they move the lanes of the road, like the Tesla will like go freak out and like automatically turn off. Um, but for the most part, at least here, here in Florida, um, down interstates and down highways, like I, I feel very comfortable with it taking me places. And dude, one day, I can't wait for this day too. One day, you're going to wake your kids up in the morning. You're going to make them breakfast and you're going to go outside. You're going to put them in there in your Tesla and you're going to say bye to them. The Tesla's going to drive them to school. No longer will I have to sit in line and drop them off every morning. You know what I mean? Or, or even make a bus. You know what I mean? We can just throw them in the car and let them go. That is on one hand terrifying, but on the other hand, <laughs> I want it so badly also, even though I don't have kids yet. That's beautiful. We've lost 90% of the audience at this point. <laughs>